proper domestic capacity we have, they don't have to compete against cheap Chinese imports. Uh, same way custom duty has been increased for, uh, I would say in the spaces like edible oils. So this is an interesting development. We have a big IPO coming, which is Adani Wilmar. And they are the largest players, uh, largest player in domestic manufacturing of edible oil. And the custom duty there has been increased from 30% to 100%. So if, if, if you were to ask for an IPO thought, I would rather apply, happily apply for Adani Wilmar. Even if I don't get an allocation, I might buy on the day of listing because I can see the one development in the budget is uh, promoting domestic manufacturing in certain spaces where this IPO is focusing on. Uh, we can discuss on more nuances later on. Wow, Vishek, I think this was quite detailed and uh, we, we have uh, ample participation. I hope people will be joining, but we'll try to cover almost all major aspects of, you know, uh, today's budget. I, I think uh, I was also checking on the number, uh, the fiscal defeat for 21 and 22 was around 6.9% of the total GDP, right? And I think uh, it's a positive indication for overall economical growth. Uh, I'm uh, uh, not sure if uh, we have uh, microeconomic experts in the panel, but would love to speak to them. But uh, anything you have to say on that, Manan, and uh, you know, Abhishek, I'll come back to you on the fiscal de de uh, deficient part. I think the best part was that last year the target was, I think, 6.8%, and it ended up at 6.9%, which is essentially a very good indicator yeah. that the government has an overspent and the recovery that we're seeing that is happening all organically. So, which is obviously a good sign for things to come. Um, going into next year, I think they've said 6.7, 6.8% again or 6.9%. I'm not sure about the number. But the point is, again, sounds good because there, it's not, it doesn't seem like the government is trying to cut corners there. They could have very easily given another target of, say, 6%, 6.2%. But it uh, seems like they are pushing for that economic recovery and maybe hopefully growth also. So from that perspective, at least it sounded good to me. Very interesting, Manan. Uh, and, and guys, I think uh, this year's budget has been quite simple. Thankfully, government did not propose uh, a lot of new regulations, even no new tax was, uh, you know, was introduced. Uh, but only the 30% a part on virtual digital assets but before that would love to hear your take on cbdc because a lot of people don't even un uh, understand the use cases it, it's very fancy term but uh, people would be genuinely curious to understand that uh, what is the actual use cases of you know uh, virtual currency for rbi uh, digital rupee or cbdc on that matter so manan or abhishek in case if you'd like to take this sure i'll take that um so obviously the the a CBDC issued by RBI can have great implications. Um, it can be essentially the next UPI. Um, the way we see UPI used everywhere, if we start having a rupee on the blockchain, uh, people might just start using that. See, the end result for a user doesn't really matter whether I have money sitting around in my bank account or I have money sitting with the RBI. It, for me, it's the same thing. But the implications of that are interesting because what that does is maybe make smart contracts possible. So if I have an, a contract with, uh, say, Ravi, that I will complete XYZ things and then you will pay me money. Instead of having to trust Ravi that he will pay me, uh, say, 1 lakh rupees for finishing XYZ task, we put it in a smart contract. What that can do is once that task is completed, that bit of the transaction is completed immediately his account gets debited and it gets transferred to my account obviously that can be done through escrow accounts xyz things but all of those are more complicated things so this can be useful for say insurance claims it can be useful for real estate transactions also so for those types of things it can be a big move obviously all of this is long-term thinking five ten years down the line but this is the good this is a very good starting point Amazing. So I, I think the primary use cases could be, especially in the uh, payment sector between uh, largely, I think bank to bank or uh, machinery related transactions. And ju just to clarify, the entire technology will be on blockchain, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's very positive approach towards digitization and probably making a transparent and, you know, strong digital economy. Um, on the other side, I think uh, this may not be directly related to budget, but last year only government proposed a new uh, tax is, is, uh, you know, scheme versus the old tax scheme. Many people are not aware, but from a CA's standpoint, 
uh i'm i'm pretty sure you must be endorsing uh, the old one approach if someone falls into 30% tax bracket but but again manan what is the plain takeaway for someone who don't understand taxation at all you know the major difference this is question coming in dm sure um i'll do a very simple breakdown if you have house rent allowance if you re- if you pay rent and you have salary and you receive house rent allowance old regime that's it you don't have to discuss this further that's it there and there if you are a professional or you don't receive house rent allowance for some reason at that point i have usually seen 15 lakh rupees is the cut off point if your income is above 15 lakh rupees new regime becomes beneficial obviously that means you need to keep in mind that you cannot switch back you cannot switch back if you are at least a professional person for salary people you can keep switching around that's not an issue if you are a professional keep in mind you can't switch back and you'll also have to keep in mind that all of the investments that were there your atc atd all of those investments you have to decide whether you want to continue making those investments as a retirement planning tool or as a medical insurance that you're paying or you want to just leave manan i think i lost you uh, can't hear you and abhishek you are on listener twitter space is re- really glitchy i'm sorry guys uh, we'll see manan in case if you can hear uh, either you can join again okay we will uh, take couple of more speakers also i, I think yogesh sir i have shared an invite with you uh, let me quickly yeah abhishek uh, abhishek i have added you i think some glitches going on abhishek are you there and there was a glitch yeah i don't know there was a glitch yeah i was trying to join back in and it was giving me option to join as a speaker or a listener i tried twice as speaker it was not letting me in this time i tried as a listener it let me in and then you asked so i am still thinking that you know we are we are lucky a uh, couple of spaces has been really dramatic then uh, speakers were not able to uh, come on the speaker panel so hopefully twitter will solve all these glitches but uh, manan uh, in in case you know uh, i have shared the request again meanwhile manan is back abhishek uh, your simple take away on the new tax regime versus old tax tax regime you know for newbies absolutely newbies um uh, so ravi to be very honest i i wouldn't be qualified to comment on that in details so that is something i have to mm-hmm. look uh, for more specific nuances i'll what i'll do is look i have i'm also very i would say uh, active reader of public investing public markets and in a way we were discussing about multiply it is a lot about the investment community so is it fine if i discuss some takeaways from the investing sense rather than taxation absolutely absolutely abhishek would love to hear that because the, the entire agenda is you know to have community driven insights and learning so that more and more people can participate and understand abhishek feel uh, happy to go ahead yeah yes yeah, sure ravi so so ravi uh, look one hot debate is the crypto debate my first sense is um government feels there is a lot of speculation happening and while this like in fact uh, you even commented on nitin's uh, tweet that you have been trying to correct people that by bringing it in the taxation radar it doesn't become legal so but one thing i'm clearly seeing is this is not a positive for the exchanges the crypto exchanges it is sure to reduce trading volumes that is my first take away but more on the public markets few spaces that i felt are beneficiary from the budget one in general is the entire infra space now the infra so capex has two components one is a public capex and one is a private capex so in the budget what what is announced is the the public capex has been increased for the year by 35% now that is good news because the public capital expenditure in a way trickles down into various ways and which is what we call gdp multiplier so now question remains how will government finance this because it's a very fine balance as a country our sovereign rating is triple b minus which means we are just the last grade 
of being investment grade this because of this as a country we cannot increase our foreign debt very aggressively so the budget spoke that the gst collection has been the strongest ever so that definitely is helping in one aspect in financing this but the other thing is say i was telling earlier government has plans like national national asset monetization which effectively means that government will not be divesting or selling these assets to private companies these will be long term leases basically government can lease it to someone like adani or gmr to run and operate these public assets for a long period and government starts getting i would say regular inflows from uh, sorry upfront uh, payment for this so this is one now uh, the other thing that is announced interesting i would say is that the entire discussion around 5g so this has been i would say the entire telecom space has been subject to a lot of discussion scrutiny on one side players uh, there's a lot of discussion around something called the agr dues and at the same time other discussion is when will 5g start so i think one important development that happened today is that government said uh, data storage has been classified as infrastructure so when somebody when something is classified as infrastructure category it can get say foreign capital so it is open to i, I don't know what 51% or 76% fdi in infra so this means i would say that telecom infra players for example a uh, data storage i would be interested in say companies like tata communication and by the way guys let me be very clear uh, these are i would say first thoughts these are not ideas or anything but i'm just saying how i'm i reading in the first cut but if data storage is getting classified as infra it means the largest player in this space in the listed side is tata communication and uh, there are other players in the space which is like tejas networks which is part of tata group now there are bharti airtel so i think these the entire telecom and telecom infra gets a positive push another space i think which is very interesting is the opening up of drone sector so last year i would say am i audible yeah yeah abhishek you are perfectly audible yeah so after i would say the 5g and telecom infra one interesting space that i am looking at is the entire opening up of drone sector so well, last year we had i would say few inter- interesting regulation changes uh, so there is the geospatial policy which was changed last year so before that any foreign player could come collect and store data of indian terrain and do that you can't store any domestic data directly on your own server basically made it illegal and they have to enter hello yeah abhishek you are able yeah so i was saying geospatial policy was changed last year and basically this was i would say made more protectionist which means say foreign players like google doing google maps they couldn't directly to use satellite images to store data of indian terrain on their own servers they had to start entering into partnership with a local player now another policy which was pushed last year was the drone policy and say pli for drone sector and i would say that there are few companies uh, today it was announced that uh, drone policy for startups is being pushed very aggressively so on the listed side i am interested in this recent ipo called map my india now that listed i think at around 1400 1500 rupees went up to 18 1900 and again is back to 13 1400 range i think this is one company which is very interesting among this plate of ipos that happened last year question for me remains around valuation because it is not obviously the kind of bull market we had last year 
no no comfy work salt would list cheap but in terms of the runway and in terms of what we call as say moat or something as a competitive advantage i think this is one interesting company in a space which is set to grow many folds uh, say for example they have drone tech which means see the usage of drone technology will be many folds right from say agriculture and mining to real estate and building construction things which used to take i would say days of manual effort they can be done in like few minutes of using drones uh, this mapminder does a lot of work in powering the drone tech they have the most exhaustive data of indian terrain which which itself is a competitive advantage so today that is one interesting space one company that i think gained from the budget now one more space like i was telling earlier the budget in a way is protectionist it is pushing for domestic manufacturing areas that government wants to promote so the way to see this is to go and see ki what is government doing on duties and taxes so few areas where i would say custom duties have been increased if government increases custom duty it means governments want to promote domestic players in that space so abhi first cut thought i had is see spaces like edible oil spaces like uh, electronics smart meters solar modules solar cells so these are segments wherein the custom duty has been increased so if somebody tries to understand which are the largest players in this can they gain meaningfully that will make a lot of sense i would say the players who will really gain are players who are able to uh, also sell a large portion domestically purely from the custom duty that is one there is a very funny case i don't know why but custom duty on umbrellas has been increased 10 to 20% so i have no idea what is happening there but broadly these are a few few areas i am looking at uh, i think the budget definitely was negative for psu banks if you see the moment cbdc was announced state bank of india was up say 1 2% before that and literally within the next 20 30 minutes it was down by 3% so i didn't understand what was the connection but definitely what manan was explaining there i think this is some bit of legacy business which might shift from the traditional psu banks with the announcement of cbdc um, and one more trend we saw today was all these i would say fintechs paytm policy bazaar they were buzzing so i think in general government was supporting more digitization of the economy abhishek i think you're on mute you're on digitization Hello. of economy we heard you till uh, yeah yeah sorry i didn't realize how did i go on mute but what i was saying is uh, it seems ki uh, there's a big push towards digitization which showed in these likes of paytm policy bazaar all the recent ibos tech ibos which have which are all down say between 30 to 50% they seemed to be very happy with the budget so i want to understand if there is something really driving that but i think i genuinely think this cbdc na is something which yeah. all of us should understand in a lot more details this this seems to be a very important development uh, maybe manan knows that better but i would personally want to understand how does this impact the various players in the value chain you know very very interesting uh, uh, take abhishek i think you explained a lot of things into very uh, diversified from drones to uh, this 5g and uh, you literally covered almost all aspect of uh, budgets manan i think uh, i'm just i've just added you, added you there was some glitch going on but uh, you know uh, i was reading this takeaway and the focus was definitely on social infra clean energy even uh, logistics side mein kafi kuch dekhne ko mila right 400 vande bharat new generation trains then 100 cargo terminals are uh, 
coming into the picture so uh, entire twitter is full of uh, 30% crypto taxes but yes there is a lot happening and i would love to hear from all of you but but manan maybe you can take the cbdc one and uh, you know we can circle back to the questions sure sure um yeah i just keep getting kicked out of the spaces i don't know why anyway um so from see the cbdc is a very good interesting proposition we need to see how it is implemented it can get very interesting very quickly the reason i think the banks were falling is because of cbdc which is basically a lot of business might move from banks to the rbi directly so basically what might happen is eventually we might all just hold an account with the rbi directly we won't need banks in the middle the reason we need banks as of today is because we need a financial intermediary because you don't know that i have all whether i have that money sitting in my account or not only the bank knows that so if i want to transfer say 1 lakh rupees to abhishek he doesn't know that i actually have 1 lakh rupees but he does know that my bank account will transfer that money to him so we can do the same thing with the cbdc um the jury is still out on cbdc the world a lot of people are not happy about cbdcs because it means it beats the whole point of crypto which is decentralization which is uh, anonymity which is not letting the government track you but from a purely from a without getting into that purely from a technological standpoint it definitely is a plus especially if, if smart contracts become a thing because right now there's so much cost attached to execution so much cost attached to uh, litigation so if you do not fulfill a contract for x y z things i need to go and sue you in court there is no other way to do it in this case if i finish x y z things your money the money will get debited directly from your account and get transferred to my account obviously what that means is there needs to be systems in place to ensure that i actually complete x y z activity suppose i am a ca you have hired me to become your charter accountant and once i file the itr you have to pay that money to me what will happen is the second i file your itr that money will get debited from my account and get transferred to my account problem is the system might not know whether i have filed your itr properly or i have just filed a nil itr we need to have systems in place because what if the money just gets debited when i filed a nil itr on your behalf so all of those things are things that will happen in time right now all it is going to be honestly if you ask me what will happen over the next one year it will be very similar to upi you won't see the difference as a user what will happen will happen very quickly but it will happen over the next 4 5 years you know uh, this is totally new to me i think i was aware about the concept manan but uh, you have given a different perspective altogether i'll quickly say hi to new speakers uh, it, uh, i have already interacted with yogesh sir before on other spaces but uh, i am pretty sure you must have spent you know good time in uh, reading the development yogesh sir any key takeaways you would like to share with us here yeah sure ravi thank you so i will not <coughs> touch upon tax aspect i will mm-hmm. stick to my specialty on the regulatory aspects so the interesting takeaways were your yeah, cbdc i will take it up as a last point one interesting aspect first one being land records management so all states uh, will be encouraged to adopt this unique land parcel identification number it is a 14 digit unique number akin to you and me have aadhar number right so land being a state subject under the indian constitution it therefore goes into the domain of state just like rera you will know is a state subject unless and until they adopt it it cannot be implemented so to speak <clears throat> because this will also lead to linkage with a national generic document registration system which they have mentioned that it will effectively mean that you can register a document a contract from anywhere in india for any other state so there will be interlinkages etc the other aspect uh, interesting is uh, under the ibc the insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, which is in connection with cross border solvency so basically what it does is just to give you a perspective see if if i am a company say i am a debtor and i am i am in a insolvency situation and uh, there are multiple insolvency proceedings filed against me as a company and i have to make several payments to several lenders now i may have assets only in india which is fine but what if i am a debtor who will have assets 
outside india in multiple several other countries geographies jurisdictions so how to implement and <clears throat> enforce that and how to revive such a debtor because uh, while everybody is uh, only tracking listed space but if you ask me if you go on the insolvency board website there are tremendous amount of companies and ibc has played a major role in revival rehabilitation of these companies so this is an interesting development yes there was a discussion paper also so hopefully this will also lead to a very good development in that area another area <coughs> regulatory aspect in the budget was <coughs> the voluntary winding up of a company under companies act <clears throat> typically takes 18 to 24 months and which they are hoping to reduce to 6 months or so because it's a voluntary winding up which is otherwise a plain vanilla cake walk process but even that takes a lot of time so that is one aspect yes as a passing reference e passport i am sure is a welcome move for all citizens e passport so that is one uh, another regulatory aspect is obviously sovereign green bonds so it will also give boost to governments market borrowing programs so the sovereign green bonds will also help a lot because see the, these are typically very long term bonds and therefore in that sense it it goes beyond the tenure of a particular government who also may be issuing it so it provides in that sense stability from a borrowing perspective Uh, another boost i see is happening in the gift city in the ifsc space so that is a very good development on dispute resolution front etc uh, another uh, point also from a regulatory standpoint is uh, venture capital then private equity investments where there are certain regulatory conflicts and there are certain inconsistencies and these investors also typically invest in startups and unlisted space as well apart from listed space so they will streamline the regulatory provisions to encourage more investments by vcs and private equities in startup uh, ecosystem etc and uh, digital rupee obviously all those who want to understand should just search for the rbi paper on cbdc this was uh, at least i was personally expecting this and this has happened uh so this is uh, as good as see if i have 10 rupee note in my bank account uh, i will also have something in in the form of a wallet so basically it is a sovereign money backed by a government it has a legal backing if i make you the payment uh you will accept it because there is a sovereign backing yes i think enough has been spoken about cryptocurrency per se Uh, see cryptocurrency is just one component of currency because if you see the definition is virtual digital asset and not cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is yeah. correct so cryptocurrency is merely a component of it one component of it so uh, this is what will always happen take it from me if you are investing i keep telling time and again if you if you invest your money in any unregulated space you are bound to get such surprises yes you can keep continue to crib you guess sir i think your voice is echoing can't hear you properly sorry is this any better yeah yeah it's better now okay thanks so what i'm saying is uh, any investment in unregulated space uh, you will be faced with such bumps uh, speed breakers such uncertain it is always because i mean uh, ravi as i give, i was i was giving you an example that what if there is a dispute between you and me as a payer and pay in the crypto ecosystem where will we go right there is nowhere correct. to go correct no so Sir, i think uh, we, we can definitely cover crypto part and uh, okay, fair in. really good good insights i think e passport part uh you know which is not uh, familiar to a lot of people but us and couple of developed countries have already moved on uh, so there is a chip and which makes it you know more secure uh, another interesting point you highlighted was the sovereign green bond so i i think till that time speakers um, i am heavily invested into sovereign gold bonds but would love to know more what exactly sovereign green bond is so abhishek 
anything you know uh, you are aware uh, or probably manan you want to take this uh i'll be honest i don't understand what the sovereign green bonds are i'm actually waiting for details my thinking is the same as yours that i understand what a sovereign gold bond <laughs> exactly. is exactly but uh, i'm assuming it will be similar treatment again from a tax perspective i expect it to be exempt and they'll probably give you some amount of interest on it but the appreciation that you get on gold i don't know what do you get appreciation on for a green bond i don't know if abhishek has more details on that correct so abhishek Manan, did you get I, a chance to uh, read uh, i mean check no not yet but say i have worked in the uh, banking space and the capital raising space so i do know that uh, the fix the capital market folks who are in the bond market they are very excited about the green bonds opportunity so this is definitely an area I, like i was telling you earlier the sovereign rating for india is triple b minus which is just the last grade of investment grade so and i was telling you government has say big plans on spending but at the same time it is constrained on where do they raise capital from if they raise external capital it impacts the sovereign debt to gdp and there is a lot of i would say arm twisting because ultimately the the country rating is done by us which is snp so government here uh, i would say rides on a very toxic turvy curve they try to balance few things uh, the point that yogesh ji mentioned that uh, it is a long tenure 10 year plus uh, so it's a very interesting topic but i would say uh, uh, definitely worth reading on don't have full clarity uh, but you know what i wanted since this topic is also about crypto cbdc yeah uh, i was reading an interest the the i would say the og threat today was deepak like every year right so in that he has mentioned one one of the tweets is even if you transfer for staking or lending the ownership of transferred wallet is not yours so it becomes a taxable transfer you know what my sense is uh, many people many kind of new instruments were coming disguised as fd say one of them i remember during ipl maybe one ad was playing get four times higher return than fd bit bns fd now if you really go and understand the semantics of bit bns fd it was not really a fixed deposit uh, it was something called staking uh, now that essentially means is you are riding on the volatility of the underlying currency and everything in my view is this one single statement questions a lot of i would say potential and the model of say the entire bit bns if you have been very aggressively putting your money into vault uh flint money so these three four names i remember because i was doing some research i think those players would start getting worried because they all become one a transfer and second taxable so uh, though i think a lot of these things government doesn't want to cancel the crypto culture but wants to build bring in a curb on this speculation and i would say many models which are trying to just build on the loopholes these things are i would say plugging in the loopholes uh on the crypto currency i won't be surprised that government sees this not as crypto currency but like yogesh ji mentioned like a crypto asset so many i would say the most interesting developments from the budget are around how people are playing around the entire crypto ecosystem uh purely on this wow abhishek i think uh, this remind me uh, just trying to be humorous bachpan mein jab aap tour pe jaane ki baat karte the to mom bolti thi dad se puchho dad bolte the mom se puchho so ek blame transfer hota rehta i think this was kind of indirect uh, you know way to uh, Uh, get 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 access on it, but but again, I think uh, we should wait for uh, for further clarity. But entire Twitter, I think uh, uh, this was not myth, but I have been reading a lot where people are simply saying that crypto is legal in India, crypto is legal in India, and people like Aviral and Nitin Kamath came and you know they clarified, and uh, I I was very surprised on on reading Bloomberg article, right? They clearly mentioned that India has legalized crypto. So on the very same note, totally second you, Abhishek. Uh, I I think we have uh, one of the crypto. Uh, 
you know, <laughs> reputed name here. So Shilika would love to hear your take, not exactly specifically on crypto, but what has been your overall take from the budget? So to be honest, I'm not, uh, I, I haven't been following the budget completely. I was just very uh, focused on the crypto side of it. Uh, but yeah, uh, the quick take uh, from the overall uh, budget is that a lot of people are telling it is legalized. I think it's more like, you know, government is kind of accepted to kind of look into crypto and see what they could do about it. And for now, they've just kind of taxed it at 30% because they don't want to really create confusions because they themselves are not sure about how, uh, what sort of slaps they should get in, what sort of uh, base people are earning into crypto. So in order to understand all of those things, I think currently they've just given a 30% uh, sort of... Uh, crypto slab uh, uh, crypto uh, tax rate uh, and also one more thing uh, here is that you know by giving the 30 percent right it, it is trying to play both of the games uh, one way it's telling people that if you want to do you can do it but you have to pay 30 percent but they're also understanding that 30 percent is on the higher side and any of the losses that you have you can't kind of uh, uh, what do you say you kind you you kind of can't kind of settle it for the gains that you're 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 getting right so basically that kind of even creates a barrier entry for a lot of people uh, into crypto at least especially the small traders who are not like kind of heavily putting in money uh so for them it's more like a barrier entry also uh restrict crypto so it, i think it's a smart move but uh eventually we'll get to know more details uh in terms of how it uh, uh spans out over the course of time so yeah, and also about the uh, digital uh, uh, digital uh, INR, right? So that's been in talks for quite some time, but it'll be interesting to uh, see how it'll uh, 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 span out over the years to come. So like the way, since India is a huge economy, right? Getting things done in a in a year's time or two years or uh, two years of time is not that easy. So things will take time is, is what I feel. But yeah, overall, it's like a positive sentiment for the crypto community that at least now we don't have to go around saying people that, uh, you know, uh, uh, crypto, crypto, you know, we crypto not do work in crypto because crypto ke, ke ban ka cheese chal raha. At least that cheese, I hmm. think, is kind of settled. So and we can outrightly go and tell people that, yeah, they're working in crypto. The only thing that we'll have to take care about is paying the taxes um, uh, uh, very religiously. So, yeah. Very, that, very interesting, uh, Shilika. And, you know, this is one benefit of community. And uh, when we hear from a different people uh, who come from a different background, and th that is where the uh, learning expense. I, I think, Manan, this question is specifically for you that uh, there are two components of this uh, new, you know, crypto 30% tax. I think first one is the 30% taxes on profit. Not specifically on crypto, but entire VDA, right? So it can be NFT, it can be CBDC, it can be crypto. Uh, on the another aspect, I think uh, there is one percent uh, TDS, which is supposed to be uh, deducted by sellers. I'm not sure if exchanges will be involved in the particular transaction, but how do you see this, uh, Manan? Because uh, earlier, I mean, if I'm an equity uh, investor, I have to file, uh, you know, my ITRs and. But in case of crypto, there might be a lot of people who don't fall into the ideal uh, tax lab range, right? But with the new regulations, I think department will get to know that what was the overall transaction size, how much profit you made. And, you know, a lot of new people will have to file the ITRs. And given the volume of crypto uh, uh, currency holders in India, I think we'll see decent amount of uh, participation in the upcoming ITR. I mean, what is your take on this, Manan, in case if you can clarify more? Um, that is absolutely true. I'll tell you this, that... Um, so over the last year, every conversation we have had, everyone holds at least a small small amount of cryptocurrency. We have a lot of clients, obviously, who are doing a lot of work in the crypto space. That's a separate audience, obviously. They, they that type of audience is extremely worried about compliance because they don't want to lose their money to the government to taxes, etc. So they are fully on board. They will pay all the tax you tell them to pay. Because I have people who made forty crores, fifty crores, also just from cryptocurrency. The other audience, which is holding these small amounts of cryptocurrency, they are also looking at compliance very carefully. I'll tell you this, that a lot of people are very happy about the way the government has gone about this, especially uh, exchanges. I think exchanges are going to be super happy because this means that they are now right on the door of regulation. It means 
the government is very unlikely that the governments will ban centralized exchanges at least so the wazirxs coin dcfs the pay of the world are very happy right now um i think abhishek made a very good point it's going to be problematic there's lots of things that can happen in the crypto world staking farming yield farming um lots of things that you could do which i still going to be in a regulatory gray area i don't think there's going to be any regulations on that problem is going to be all of these startups which are thinking of these ideas are already implementing it i had discussions with a lot of them on a regular basis and we've been waiting for some regulations to come out unfortunate part is right now so we have no clarity all we've done is we've created a bigger problem um what i'm most worried about is if i am a person who is paying to money money to you in crypto terms i have to deduct tds so those payments in crypto that is where it will become problematic exchanges will deduct tds that is all fine that will be fine also not too much to worry about exchanges will figure out a way to do it exchanges will problems will be these individuals who are doing crypto say peer to peer trading or uh, paying money to each other in crypto terms those people are going to struggle so so manan uh, you know here is this interesting question that how who exactly is supposed to pay taxes i mean at the end of the day it's investor or trader who are making the transaction mm-hmm. but uh, i mean i need to pay while filing my itr or uh, the exchanges will deduct it sure um so here's what will happen you suppose i have an account with say coin dcx you purchase bitcoin for 100 rupees you sell it for 200 rupees very simple transaction okay yeah. you have a tax on the capital gains of 30 of 100 sorry and you have a tax of 30 on that what coin dcx will do is deduct 1% of that 200 so they'll deduct 2 rupees so eventually you need to pay 28 out of your pocket oh very interesting i mean that that is where uh, the you know equation becomes interesting for people so ultimately manan, manan just one second isn't it like 30% plus 1% tds no 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 that tds is set off tds will always be set off against yeah. uh, your tax liability so shilika what happens is uh, yeah. the tax deducted at source right so you have already paid in advance to the government so in your overall tax liability it gets suggested manan correct me if i'm wrong correct 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 good good makes sense then abhishek Just you are uh, trying to say something. no because i think in a in a bunch of pieces uh, it was like the other way around 30 it was like 30 plus one uh, sort of i know i read a lot of it it happens every year and then things get clarified but it's it always works that way Your TDS oh. will always be set off against your tax liability. There's no way. Also, I one, uh, also. one quick uh, question that I had, uh, Manan. Mm-hmm. I think uh, that also will be very interesting for everyone to know. So, just say like, uh, for example, if um, if a foreign company, just say a crypto company, is paying an Indian employee, uh, through these payment gateways like Deal, wherein they pay uh, USDT to Deal. Mm-hmm. and deal kind of uh, uh what happens in deal is you kind of just can convert in, into inr and that's what comes into your account so basically the employee gets paid into the inr sort of thing so will this be taxed as a foreign income or will it come un- under the 30% tax slab or uh, uh, crypto tax or uh, uh, slab how's how's that so i'll tell you what we've been doing in cases like this what we do is we treat it as a two trans transaction first tranche is when you receive the money in usdt terms whether it is lying in deal or it is lying in a separate wallet wherever it is lying that is your first transaction which is your business income professional income whatever you want to call it salary income depending on the facts of the case the second tranche is when you sell that and you receive inr now if you are doing usdt so actually, you have that uh, small... one second manan i'm uh, just correcting you here so the point is there's no selling that's kind of happening Correct. Correct. right and it, and also the uh, money that the foreign company is paying is just like shown uh, uh, that they've paid the person but it's not like there's no like specific account as such it's like it's like a plug and play like a social platform know, sort of thing right i know yeah yeah so basically what will happen is you receive usdt which will be converted at the I- rbi reference rate Okay. now there might be some fluctuation in the usdt value by the time you withdraw the money mm-hmm. i understand that there is no sale happening per se but we're still treating it as a sale because as such that is money that you have received in a certain form and then changed form this okay. is 
for us gt terms it won't be a problem problem becomes is when you receive money in say eth terms a lot of people are receiving money in eth or in bitcoin also Good. at that so time the, the fluctuation be- become wild so the one is receiving an eth and bitcoin do they have to pay 30% directly uh, or even the ones who who who, who the for, for whom like you know they getting in usdt and then again it's getting converted into inr will they also fall into the 30% slab so we're treating it as a two tranche transaction first is when you are receiving the let's assume you are receiving bitcoin when you receive bitcoin what are the value of bitcoin on that day suppose it is 30 lakh rupees Suppose you received one Bitcoin and it was thirty lakh rupees. Then when you sold it and you converted it to INR, the value was thirty-two lakh rupees. So the initial thirty lakh. But that won't be in a case of USDT, right? In terms of stable exactly. coin. Exactly. For USDT, it'll have it'll have a very minor deviation. So for USDT terms, you can still show the full amount as business income, professional income. But as, for, as for the Bitcoin, slabs, right? Like the normal income slabs. At the slab rate, exactly, because that is professional income that you receive. For fact, for fact. that isn't trading income per se. At yeah, least that's yeah, the stand yeah. we're taking as of now. As and when rules become clearer, things might change. But that's the stand we're taking right now, at least. Also, one more quick question, like follow up question. Uh, there's also uh this thing mentioned that on the transfer of assets, uh, there will be a tax that needs to kind of be be uh paid. So, uh, also, what I would want to understand is when when they mean transfer, is it is it like when you're selling from one currency to another, or just merely transferring from one exchange wallet to another? So that's where it's very interesting because they've specifically changed the wording from sale to transfer, which means they are trying to indicate something. Now, we as a CA community are going to spend hours arguing about this. This is going to become a litigator issue, but. If you ask me, as of today, every transfer becomes a taxable event. If you want to take a conservative view, that is what I would say. So basically, even if you're transferring from Vadirex to Coin DCX, just say about hundred dollars, you again have to pay thirty percent on that. So Correct. by the time I Correct. I transfer it in four exchanges, you know, like you'll have nothing left. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have nothing left. Yeah, that that, um, that doesn't make sense to be honest. It doesn't. Like, it doesn't. Yeah, I agree yeah, it with makes you. Zero sense. See, if a client comes and asks me, and I'm working with a client, I tell them we take a stand that is not taxable. But if you're asking me as a general audience, I will always take a conservative view, and I'll say each of them is a taxable event. But because so, you know, like taxes are paid on income, right? Like mere, uh, you know, tax on transfer doesn't really make sense. It's it's my stance on this. I agree, but taxes aren't logical. That is something I have learned over the last ten years. Taxes are never logical. <laughs> so, uh, Manan, I think. Uh... Shilika, you have asked really good questions. Uh, Yogesh sir, before that, I'll let Abhishek speak. But there's very layman question coming. And I think this is going to be interesting for a lot of audience. It's kind of a mythbuster session happening. Uh, people are enjoying. Uh, you can simply, you know, spread the word so that more and more people can uh, get to hear the insights. But Manan, imagine there is a person who is earning, uh, say, two or three LPA, which falls under very lower bracket income, right? Now that person made, say, uh, uh, one lakh worth of uh, uh, Bitcoin transaction. जिसमें ही मेड अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ फिफ्टी के आई मीन ही बॉड बिटकॉइन और एनी क्रिप्टो करेंसी फॉर बाई वैल्यू वॉज वन लाख एंड सेलिंग वैल्यू वॉज वन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सो द नेट प्रॉफिट वॉज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इन दैट केस सो यू आर सेंग दैट वन परसेंट टी डी एस विच विल बी वन परसेंट ऑफ वन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करेक्ट करेक्ट तो वन वन परसेंट ऑफ वन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड विच ट्रांसलेट्स टू फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड विल बी डिडक्टेड बाई द एक्सचेंज Uh, and deposited to the uh, you know government against the pan card of the person who is transacting but this person has to declare that 50000 as an income and have to pay 30% taxes on his own right correct correct and uh, don't you think so that is where the i think complication start because uh, as of the date i think that is why we are seeing quite low participation from non salaried individual versus salaried individual because they get paid salaries uh, via official channels and they, they have to file their itrs but right now i think after this development we'll be seeing a heavy amount of participation from folks who haven't been uh, you know paying their itrs because ultimately they have to pay it back so isme tax kaise dikhega i mean wo to non taxable slab mein hai 3 lakh jiski income hai manan so it's going to become a very obvious that you have even 500 rupees of cryptocurrency transactions they will tax it that is what it seems like as per the regulation right now so they're making it very clear ki if you have Decent amount of income and you are anyway filing your ITR. To only bother about this, otherwise don't even get into it. That is the indication we're getting right now. 
um that obviously means there might be lower participation but what i have seen is tax never stops anyone from participating in anything i have seen people invest in the wildest of things tax never stops anyone yeah manan also one more uh, quick question here um uh, we did talk about you know uh, uh people like kind of you know using centralized exchanges and and kind of trading into cryptocurrency how will this shape on the defi side of it because i'm pretty interested uh, on on to that side and because i know a lot of people use decentralized platforms where it's just like a wallet address and nothing associated with it right uh, and someone and and I, and i know a lot of people that are totally into defi like totally into defi like they don't use any of the centralized exchanges and for that matter even uh, with the centralized exchanges right if you're using like platforms like kucoin or sendex you don't really have to do kyc so in, in in those respects how do you think that i think we lost shilika to uh, listener manan uh, yeah, did you I, I got the context anyway so i'll answer the question um see there is a practical aspect to it and there is the theoretical aspect to it the practical aspect is there is no way to track very simple the government has no way to track a lot of the decentralized transactions um so you could theoretically get away with not reporting problem is eventually at some point you might want to withdraw the money into inr when you decide to withdraw the money into inr at that point you will probably do it through a centralized exchange because it's very difficult to do it otherwise uh, a pancake swap uniswap etc will not let you do that so at that point you will probably get caught in the whole uh, income tax jamela as it may yeah um that being said there is a lot of people who are in the defi world so i speak to both full spectrum of people which is one side of the spectrum which is like i don't want to report anything i will spend my money also in cryptocurrency terms in which case let's see what happens we will first need to wait and see what the crypto bill says at that point they might see if you ask me the way this is going to go is they will first regulate the centralized exchanges and then just say all decentralized exchanges are not allowed and they will not let you transfer money from centralized to decentralized and vice versa at which point you will probably get stuck somewhere in the chain you know i'm thinking this is going to be pretty interesting because people who are not pay- paying itrs just because of crypto transactions they will be supposed to you know fall into radar and probably declare other things which were not declared before and i am i'm pretty sure this is going to be very interesting for entire finance shell in uh, ca fraternity but manan how exactly you guys are going to evaluate uh, expensive jpgs and monkey pictures this is a kind of fun question <laughs> um the same way that we have been over the last two years um we treat each of them as a separate asset we consider the purchase cost and we consider the sale cost uh, those are actually easier to deal with than say crypto swaps which are a nightmare to deal with one uh, nft is just one purchase and then one sale so that is fairly straightforward we in this case now we'll pay we'll be paying a fat 30% on that no no <laughs> you know that that was kind of you know fun question but yeah totally get it abhishek uh, uh, you are trying to unmute i think you can add your points and we'll go to yogesh i hope you are enjoying the conversation you're on mute abhishek in case if you're trying to speak yeah ravi yeah so ravi my doubt got clarified uh earlier we were discussing the 1% tds on profits and i was reading the 1% tds is on the entire sale value so i think that is now clear that 1% tds is on the entire transaction value uh that is one so let me clarify i am an audience when it comes to crypto uh it's very interesting to listen to people who are very clued in into the ecosystem i am actually sad so like i was saying i look at community at multiply and just yesterday night we recorded a session with sumit gupta of coin dcx and we had pomp so uh, pompliano anthony pompliano i was wondering if you could have done it today it would have a whole new bunch of topics but uh, so i'm i'm an audience on this i can contribute more on the public market like i was talking of areas around data telecom 5g infra So, so those are topics um, maybe if if we are moving back to those topics i can contribute there but crypto i am an audience 
Def- definitely abhishek definitely uh, i i think uh, saurabh was trying to join for good amount of time saurabh you can quickly add and we'll yeah, yeah. thank thanks ravi for allowing me to uh, contribute in this forum uh, i am a chartered accountant by profession so i wanted to give some sort of clarity on this crypto thing which i was listening i think from manan or man was pro- providing his inputs so i think uh, it is not very complicated thing uh, everything is very simple uh, the government is saying that it's a 30% capital gain tax basically uh, it's a because it's it is defined as a capital asset now so it is a flat 30% tax on the transfer of the asset transfer is generally used you know it's in that in the as a you know when we say transfer transfer is not not a kind of a different terminology they are using transfer in the, in terms of you know whole cap, uh, capital gain transactions no including immobile property so when you are simply you know putting uh, just to take an example if you are putting uh, 100 rupees from your inr bank account and you are doing initiating your first crypto transaction uh, you are purchasing that asset for that 100 rupees so it will be inr to inr valuation you invested 100 rupees in in terms of inr what you are getting back after selling in terms of inr in your inr bank account at that point of time it will be treated as sale otherwise it will not be treated as sale you are converting you are transferring within your wallets it's not a transfer in terms of uh, you know capital gain for the for the purpose of capital gain and second important point is that 1% tds clarity is yet not there uh, buyers will not be required because it will it this particular section is applicable from 1st july onwards so government will definitely come with some notification and make the exchanges liable for reporting the transaction as well as for this tds thing because it cannot be left upon buyers so these applications like coin dcx and other applications will be liable for 1% tds so any question on this particular thing i can clarify it's simple loss ca- loss carry forward is not allowed you cannot set off any income from one currency say bitcoin with any other loss of say any other cryptocurrency any other token you cannot set off even between them uh, this is what what has been mentioned in the memorandum as well take in take in your comments or uh, abhishek uh, i'm so sorry there is a lot of glitch i'm as i studied you again but uh, quickly circling back to topic uh, what you wanted to you know highlight abhishek uh, we, we can definitely cover and would love to hear your insights from the yesterday's conversation but i think yogesh you had a point to add yogesh sir go ahead and we'll go to abhishek sorry for keeping you on hold no no it's okay so i mean sorry abhishek i will be circling back to crypto for a moment just to provide some clarity so ravi you are right uh, till some celebrity or somebody tweeted that uh, crypto is not legal i mean uh, we spoke at around 1 o'clock right yeah, so just yeah. just so just to just to clarify taxability of an asset doesn't tend to amount to it being deemed legal or recognized or regulated yeah see i mean there is a, there is plethora of judgments and jurisprudence under the income tax act that even if you earn illegal income it is taxable forget about this being legal illegal so that debate is academic you have to pay tax even on illegal income whether anybody likes it or not that is one so to answer the point to clarify it is not currently regulated full stop that is one aspect second is uh, i heard one of the panelist mentioning and frankly that statement was scary that there is no requirement also to do kyc of a customer i mean just imagine therefore where it can uh, lead to and what it what are the consequences around it not doing a basic fundamental kyc of a customer i mean and that's precisely the reason which which the garg committee has covered and therefore there are money laundering issues around all of this whether anybody agrees or not there are customer uh, protection issues just imagine today the same universe of individuals if something goes wrong will carry a morcha to the government to say that sir humko bachao abhi are but there are enough signals for you is it not sufficient that it is unregulated quote unquote I and mean, what else you want uh one more point last point perhaps manan may want to react uh manan in the memorandum there is even a provision where accounting the proceeds around this as a suspense account or by any other name called will also be captured under the tds provision so perhaps you may want to react to this unless you have already uh, rather not read it so i just wanted to allude to this because this is again a provision which captures the manner in which 
you may want to uh, or lack of proper word fudge the accounts and park it under suspense account so even that is captured under the tds provision 194s thank you so you guys i think uh, even i got told when i posted you know that uh, just because uh, something is taxable doesn't make it uh, legalized and i read that bloomberg article and it made me think that how exactly this is happening at global level and people started criticizing and thank god i think people like uh, nitin kamat posted and that is where people are realizing no i, I mean it, it's not at all regulated but a lot happening on the i think fin twitter spaces today manan you may want to answer this and uh, we'll quickly circle back to the topic sure i think uh, yeah that is one of the i mean i personally like it purely because a lot of people have tried to do xyz things um so the suspense account that yogesh sir uh, spoke of it's something that people have thought about clearly the government also knows about it so any time you tan- try to transfer the asset per se to whether you call it a suspense account or you call it a dummy wallet or you call it someone else's wallet or you call it a meta mask wallet which has no identity at the end somewhere in the chain it's probably going to get caught at some point so that might not work problem will also be that you will have to do a tds on it and one other issue might you might face and this is something we're going to keep debating really is if you need to deduct tds for transferring to your own wallet um because if that is a transfer then you might have to deduct tds in your own name unlikely to happen but that is something that as per the current regulations might be something that might happen Well, thank you so much mayan and uh, just to reduce the heat of the room i think uh, uh, there has been couple of other development to digital education in university has been one concept which was uh, taken into consideration any of the speaker if you want to pick or if you want to discuss on that i think uh, pandemic has been the prime example and government has been uh, setting up a lot of digital initiatives uh, we have it takes i mean i i don't want to take the name but uh, what exactly it is uh, in case abhishek manan uh, yogesh sir you try to treat more on it so digital universities and post office uh, being converted to you know banking infrastructure i think uh, these two things we can finally cover on abhishek uh, you want to take it sorry we will not not fully really aware of this i think one interesting development we should discuss is also what does it mean to have e passport e passports uh so why i am interested in understanding what is the reason why government is going for e passport and like what is the implication if anyone has a view yeah uh I I think it's more of a security identifier. Even I was reading uh, just couple of hours back, right? Uh, couple of uh, many developed country they already have uh, e passport, chip based passport, and that provides protection against identity theft. Uh, uh, so that could be the possible use cases also to protect privacy. So not not very sure, but in case Manan or Yogesh, if you have any idea. No, also, yeah. uh, yeah, Yogesh sir. sorry no i said i have no views on e passport so please go ahead thank you C- correct uh, we we definitely have to you know look look more into this abhishek i, I am pretty sure your community can um, answer this in much better way but anything you want to share from yesterday's event i, I think i am genuinely curious to learn because you had amazing people over there you mentioned sorry before we go to that i'll just add one thing on the e passport um, yes manan so one thing i think that might happen is they might have a global database say right now if you go to dubai they don't actually scan your passport at all while coming back from dubai they just see your face and let you through the e gate maybe they'll do that with your fingerprint at some point in the future you don't need to show your passport it's all linked to your fingerprint for that matter or your iris but i think uh, you know i did couple of international trip my uh, manan and uh, they did scan into some machine just like the they do at immigration at you know indian counters i think mm-hmm. it it happened in dubai and malaysia too so not sure if this could be the possible use case but i think uh, mainly i was looking into the privacy and uh, theft aspect and uh, especially the biographic and uh, biometric data is not at all contained currently in the passport right 
uh, correct this is something that we can definitely look into after i think uh, introduction of e passport our biometric and bio, uh, 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 you know uh, biogeographical data would be uh, part of the chip so that will make it more secure and you know no no one will be able to play with it uh, but, but again i think i would be looking forward to the credible resources around it yeah abhishek all right ravi no sir ravi i think we had a very interesting discussion around the crypto bit right. um so apart from that i would say one very hotly debated topic at least for investors have been the entire electric vehicle space so i think there were some developments today on the battery space say battery swapping was promoted so anyone have a view on that uh, i want to read more i am not fully done but in case anyone has read manan did you get a chance to look on the battery swapping infra i think government is enforcing uh, so uh, no matter i mean uh, what is the op- operator they will support the industry as far as i i can recall uh, you know you can swap your batteries across the uh, stations see i like the idea in principle i am no expert when it comes to ev so i'll caveat this by saying that i like the idea as a consumer i really like the idea that everyone will have similar batteries there will be interoperability um i don't know what that means for innovation i don't know if that is a hurdle to innovation or that will just help in innovation if we have standardized parts interesting uh, you know uh, we'll end this uh, session in i think next 5 to 10 minutes we'll take couple of questions uh, in case if you feel like speaking you can go ahead prashant and manisha may i'll come back to you but anjali you have been uh, on mute for a while i think you have some questions please go ahead yeah thanks ravi um so uh, my question is not related to uh, the current uh, the thing which we are going but uh, i wanted to ask question from manan like you shared that the, <clears throat> you know peer to peer transaction and the peer to peer traders will gonna get in trouble so i just wanted to know more about that part or and also like <clears throat> government said that uh, the transaction the 30% tax thing so uh, what if i am uh, transferring from metamask to binance so uh, they don't belong to india and uh, like binance is foreign exchange so how things going to get applied on that sure let me answer the second question first which is it's very unlikely that a binance or a metamask or a coinbase or anyone will be affected by the regulations what it does mean is you'll be you'll continue being in the regulatory gray area that you've been so far um the same way that we didn't have any regulations for indo indian exchanges the same thing will continue for that at least until the crypto bill is introduced um so that is going to remain regulatory uncertainty definitely um what that doesn't mean is uh, the tax implications will continue for you as an indian resident while the tds will not be deducted if you want to be 100% compliant you still have to pay tax now you could argue that they'll never find out etc etc but that's not the point of the conversation if you are having uh, gain from cryptocurrency that is a taxable event now that is in the regulations um coming to the peer to peer aspect of it uh problem will be if uh, you want to purchase cryptocurrency from me what will happen is i will have to deduct tds time you purchase cryptocurrency from me um that puts an additional burden on me and obviously peer to peer doesn't mean that I actually know who you are peer to peer is all in the decentralized world but fact of the matter is as per the regulations i need to deduct tds and i don't pay which is which might not be possible so that is something which the peer to peer platforms exchanges etc will have to figure out a way to do or they have to stop peer to peer exchanges altogether you know i hope that answers the question but uh, we have diversified set of speakers today loved hearing from uh, investor fraternity bit crypto and equities then again jogesh is here from compliances bit uh, prashant i'll come back to you but uh, manisha ma'am how you would love to hear your take on the budget uh, since you are you know from the administration only to aap se bhi sunna chahunga bataiye ma'am you are on mute in case if you are trying to speak Okay, she is not audible. Prashant, you can go ahead in case if you have anything to add or ask. Yeah, thanks, Ravi, oh, for uh, giving me this opportunity. So I I heard like uh, one of the panelists mentioning about this crypto legality thing, but uh, thanks to Yogesh, he con- he clarified. 
uh, it's not legal yet. That will be done through the crypto bill and no one knows when that will be done. That was my point I wanted to tell. But my question, here it goes. How do you see, like maybe like other panelists, uh, like how do you see, there is nothing I have seen uh, for middle uh, middle income people, like there is nothing. It's just infrastructure and, uh, you know, like education, of course, uh, but nothing much on the tax savings and all these things. So my follow-up question is like, if a middle-class person cannot save more, uh, then they cannot invest more. How anyone panelists see this as like a growth for markets, especially like if we don't have we don't uh, have much disposable income. That's my question. Uh, by the way, I don't live in India. I stay outside. I stay in Europe. So th this is just a question from my friends. Uh, or uh, or my relatives or my mm -hmm. family members standpoint what an interesting question prashant i think uh, such kind of questions if you would love to di uh, discuss abhishek uh, you may want to take this sorry uh, by the way we also have sahil in the panel maybe you can invite sahil to speak i've just invited but him i'll yeah. tell you yeah i'll tell you my view so in general the kind of setup in which the budget is coming uh, I think experts, at least insiders, were not expecting a consumption or a demand side budget. Uh, in this sense, we are now, say, entering into the UP elections, some interesting state elections. And after, say, 2021, in the second wave, if you see UP and these states were very badly impacted. So it, there was a section that was, in fact, thinking that this might be a populist budget. Uh, I think this came out to be in between. Uh, chances of giving tax ops and tax cuts practically were looking very negligible. Uh, the budget is more on the triggering the supply side, which is in the capital spending and everything. But I also agree that there is not much in the budget uh, putting in the hand of, I would say, direct taxpayers. So this is this joke that the government definitely thanks the taxpayer that they are able to present a budget for the supply side, but I don't think there is anything much for in the hands of us, like retail investors. Yeah, thanks, uh, Abhishek. Uh, so my yeah, so my point is like, uh, so when there is a one lakh plus crore uh, GST collection, right? Um, why can't you know? <laughs> It's just a question, you know, like why can't government think of like this four or five percent people or whatever the percentage of people paying the taxes, right? They can uh, give some, uh, I don't know, this just just exploring this thing. And yeah, so I didn't find uh, much uh, hmm. for for middle income people. So I that's think, uh, I just you know, yeah. that, that's a pain you highlighted. Uh, all of us would relate with this fact. Uh, whoever is paying direct taxes, <laughs> monthly TDS, who is paying direct taxes, who is paying direct taxes, ATC yeah. ki limit badane ke liye kafi expectations thi, but I, I don't know. Thankfully, uh, tax ka slab nahi bada, so that's kind of a relief only <laughs> because a lot of people were expecting ki tax slab yeah. ka rate bada sakte. But Yogesh ji, you can go ahead. Manan, aap se bhi yes, I'm, I'm done. Thanks, Ravi, for giving Thanks, me. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, uh, Thanks, yeah. so, so I think uh, uh, the question lies in what <clears throat> Mr. Prashandara mentioned, that we 4 or 5% pay tax, so which effectively means we are subsidizing the balance who are not paying right so the answer lies in that statement itself and this will continue to remain good one sir good one <laughs> this will continue to remain if you look at the crypto tax the preamble what is the objective behind it the objective behind it is increasing the tax base now whether it is legal illegal that is academic discussion you have to pay tax to reiterate even on illegal income on a comparative basis, let me put it this way. I have only two more points. If I compare myself to my friend sitting next to me or my neighbor who is invested in crypto, honestly, as an advocate, although I fall under the highest category, I pay more than 30% than he as a crypto investor will now pay. So that, so the point I'm making is, sir, uh, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Thank you so much. What a, what a subtle way, I think. <laughs> Manan, your take. Uh, see, 
it's very easy for us sitting here on Twitter to say that we should get lower tax rates. Fact of the matter is, like Yogesh Ji said already, is those four five percent of India which pays taxes. Now, you could get into a political debate about this and say farmers should be taxed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But fact of the matter is, we're the privileged one to four percent at least. So, while we don't think our income is significant because we live in urban cities, we look around, we see others earning a lot of money, way more money than us. Um, we obviously think we want some sort of benefit. We compare ourselves to the Mukesh Ambani's of the world. You could do an opposite comparison and you could compare yourself to the median of what India is. So, unfortunate thing is that is the world we live in. Can't help it. Tax That is how we are going to have to live our life in India. At least that is what it is. And if you want, so I think there's some stats on this. If you want two and a half lakh rupees, you're probably in the top 10% of India, which is not a significant sum of money at all. Yes, Manan, Manan, bro. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yes, Manan, actually, I was going to say that there is some calculator available. If you insert that data, it will throw up that you are in top 1% in the globe or India, whatever. But, uh, sir, I think I was left. See, I always always of it that what is certainly that is that anything that is. No, no, to- totally second you. But, but Manan, there is a follow-up question. I mean, uh, not exactly related to budget, but what kind of common mistakes you have seen, you know, uh, people uh, who can be considered as knowledgeable or aware of almost all of the stuff doing, uh, uh, you know, mistakes while uh, making their taxes. Also, uh, what we have for startups in this budget, Manan? Um, so, common mistakes can be quite a few things. For salaried folks, the most common thing I've seen is forgetting to submit the investment declaration or running around last minute to have the rent agreement in place. Say they're paying their family, they're paying parents, etc. Um, that is one thing that I've seen very commonly. Other than that, it's forgetting to pay advance tax. So obviously salaried folks have a major chunk of their uh, taxes paid through TDF. But what people tend to forget is if you have investment gains, if you have short-term, long-term gains, or you have any other income, say fixed deposits, interest on bank account, you have to pay tax on that out of your pocket, very likely. So that is something people forget and then they end up having to pay uh, interest on that, which is 1% per month. So that is probably the worst case. And obviously, worst thing is to not file your ITR at all and realize after two, three years that, okay, I should have been filing my ITR. So we have a very low threshold for filing ITR. We have only two and a half lakh. If your income is anything more than two and a half lakh rupees, you need to be filing your ITR, even if all TDS is paid. Um, for startups, unfortunate thing is there is nothing new. There was absolutely nothing new in this budget. All they did was they extended the period for the eligible startup registration, which we knew was going to come anyway because of the pandemic. So what happens is you can uh, not pay tax on three out of eight years or 10 years. So slight benefit there, but nothing fresh as such. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manan. Um, these were really insightful. I think we have Gurmeet ji. Uh, we interacted over a couple of his spaces. Before we go, uh, Gurmeet ji would love to hear your take, um, you know, on overall budget or anything you want to add here. How are you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, you know, the uh, there was, uh, I think I, I'm a firm believer that uh, the market reaction tells you how the budget is. So while the equity markets loved the budget, uh, and markets, mind you, were up two, three days leading up to the budget. The bond market did not like it because uh, uh, the government fiscal deficit was a little higher than what the market thought. And there was no clarity on how this 16 lakh crore borrowing uh, will will be absorbed because, you know, uh, market was expecting that India's bond will be included in the global bond index or there'll be some measures, you know, to absorb this excess supply. So uh, I think, and uh, you know, and that lot of time, I think usually, uh, you know, because market is nothing. I think uh, purely from a growth perspective, I think I think budget is structurally very positive. Thirty-five uh, percent plus capex is is quite big, and uh, you know that spending more on roads. I mean, they are expanding highways by twenty-five thousand kilometers. Uh, they are adding uh, housing projects for forty-eight thousand crores. There is more credit to uh, MSMEs which have been impacted because of COVID. Uh, there is a huge thrust on this clean energy, you know, ecosystem. Uh, so there's a PLI for solar uh, panel manufacturing. 
they are uh, they are asking they are putting additional excise duty if you are not blending ethanol with petrol so i think overall it's a, it's a nice uh, uh, you know digital pro grow growth green kind of a budget markets like government spending more focusing on growth uh, and that is what it's going to do and you know if you if you get a 9.2% gdp growth uh, with 5% 6% inflation uh, which means you are talking of nominal growth of 15% uh, which essentially means that the earnings uh, you know uh, can grow 15 20% Uh, which is which 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 is which is good news plus it has a multiplier impact the last time india had a capex cycle was from 2000 2001 to 2008 we literally have had no capex cycle and i was i was listening to mr deepak parekh today uh, i was on cnbc for some discussion and he made an excellent point that if india can grow at 8% for 4 5 years uh, you know everything will be taken care of uh, he said that so many crore people will come up the poverty line you know 8% plus gdp growth consistently can can do miracles on per capita income job creation everything and uh, a lot of us know that china from 2000 to 2010 actually grew at 9% for like 8 9 10 years right and 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 look at where it is today right so and so if you are at 3 trillion and you can manage that kind of a growth for 4 5 years we will be in a different orbit uh, you know uh, altogether so i think pretty pretty constructive uh would have expected some more for few sectors like tourism and hotel and all because those sectors have been uh, battered but i think i'm yet to see the full fine print uh, maybe there's something in there for that, them as well yeah. so gurmeet ji what an interesting take and i think um, quite optimistic uh, hindustan bulan the long on india ncb offensive i'll have one follow up question from you and before i uh, go to sahil but uh, uh, there was this question from earlier speaker that he said uh, there is nothing uh, for middle class in the budget uh, you know so uh, yogesh and manan has uh, abhishek has added very uh, good points on the supply side there, there is a lot on supply side but since there is no direct benefit for direct tax paying users gurmeet ji see i think ek cheez mujhe clear ho gayi hai is government ki last 7 8 years is that they are more focused on numerator than on denominator and i think the sooner we align our expectations the better it is right so if you see uh, so they believe in probably and that's what i think is that uh, do uh, take care of the numerator give more uh, itna sab kuch kar rahe hain startups ke liye itna agar economy grow karegi itna expenditure hoga uh, automatically income badega so I, I, you, you should not focus too much on that and i think we are at that stage in my view where if our per capita income goes up uh, you know ravi bhai by let's say 100 dollars or something i think the impact will be very very huge so what I have, i'll give you a simple example agar maan lijiye aapki salary 20000 rupees hai or let's say 25 i'm giving a very layman example if your salary is 25000 rupees your fixed expenses rent everything emi aap let's say 2000 rupees bacha pate ho moment your income becomes 30000 then the money which is left is not 2000 it is 6 or 7000 so the jump when you when your per capita income goes up above a certain thre- threshold on the money which is available for spending and investing is much much higher it is not just a 10 15% percent jab wo 2000 suddenly 5 6000 jab ho jata hai it translates into a very great cycle of consumption and you know investments so my view is that uh, the, uh, you know the focus has to be on more opportunities uh, how to have more income how to you know grow as a professional if the economy is doing well you know everything will be taken care of i do agree that the taxpayers in this country deserve a little better than what they are getting right now uh, uh, so i am in that camp where probably you know I, in fact i have been very vocal if you see my tweets i always talk about ltcg or stt nahi hona chahiye i think it's a you know and you know i don't understand why government is penny wise pound foolish on this it's today if they if aapko 2 lakh crore ka divestment karna hai sabse zyada ltcg to government hi bharega so you know it is left pocket right pocket and for that 10 15000 crores you know they are they are what they are not realizing is the what what we can channel in, so india needs risk capital to become 5 trillion dollar we need people to move away from fds and ppfs uh, we can't afford mm-hmm. paying 7 8% to people so i think i am very vocal about it but as long as the income levels are going up economy is doing good i don't have much reasons to complain yeah absolutely second you gurmeet ji thank you so much for adding this uh, there was mention of sovereign green bonds in the today's budget sovereign gold bonds sab jante hain sovereign green bond ke bare mein bhi sunenge but be- before that i'll go to sahil uh, sahil i think i have been trying to add you for a good amount of time how are you uh, you can you know unmute sure thank you thank you uh, 
uh, all good all good so i'll give you a very short you know brief how how i look at it uh, two things first i think the overall budget is very neutral i don't think it's a growth budget uh, government is trying to wait and watch and see through the covid disruption that is the point number 1 if you look at the overall expenditure it's not rising at a very meaningful number because they increased the expenditure over the last year the numbers are quite high so incrementally they are spending just about 5% extra which is not very high secondly i think uh, if you look at the growth number the nominal growth is at 11% for fy23 that is the next year and for fy22 they have given a number of 17% of nominal gdp growth uh so which means that the government's own assessment of growth is very different from the market very different from rbi very different from what other agencies are saying that we'll grow at 8 9% in fy 23 uh government either says that inflation is going to be very low or real growth is going to be about 5 and a half or 6% which i think is a very very nuanced number very logical number to look at and that's how they have increased their own revenue numbers also so the revenue part of the budget is exciting it's very not exciting it's very logical i think uh, this change has started from fy21 where government started giving numbers which are more logical i think that is continuing which is a good thing second part of the budget which is the expenditure it is toned down uh the 35% or 40% capex number is misleading it's not that number it's not true if you total up the whole base if you look at the capex plus the iebr which is internal and extra budgetary resources the growth is just about 8% if you look at like for like comparison no complaints but overall complexion is maybe a little sober than what it could have been i think probably government could have spent a little more money third part is the fiscal deficit number which is at 16 and a half lakh crores i think it's probably a little bit on the upper side generally government promises that it will keep it at a you know number which is more uh, digestible by the market this time they might have heard on the other side giving a higher number my sense is that it could probably see a surprise by the end of the year because the revenue projections you know can get beaten very easily and second point the way the bond market reacted you know with a 15 20 basis points rally on the yield uh, that might have you know that might undergo a change because the uh, nssf which is how the uh, government has been managing its borrowing was pegged at 4.2 lakh crores which is a very small number so not going into too many details i think it will probably get toned down over time uh, the what are the wins from the budget i think not announcing any new taxes or tweaking old taxes i think it's a very comforting factor for me in spite of what a lot of participants would want to see taxes go down or get changed Uh, countries which progress over time have very very predictable tax regimes we should not tinker with taxes too much that is rule number 1 government has been trying to do that for the last 2 2 to 3 years should continue doing that a very predictable tax regime uh, secondly we don't have the room to cut taxes our tax revenues are very shallow at 10 11% of gdp we don't have room to cut taxes so they might as well continue with what they are doing right now and third thing which is i think uh, they avoided any self goal by announcing any big bang policy measure not needed budget is not to not the day to announce any big bang policy measures most of the effective policies announced historically have been outside of the budget and that should continue so they anyways can't do anything on indirect taxes bulk of it is in the gst council excise duty happens you know without budget doesn't really matter they actually tweaked it today so you are left with only income tax where you don't have any elbow room to change anything so my take away is a non event budget is a great event because you don't need any uh, negative news flow from an event which anyways doesn't make a lot of sense to have it's just uh, uh, you know hamare numbers ka khata hai sirf wo which is what it should be so on the whole i think it's a it's an event which is going to you know perplex or worry the bond market for a few days until rbi comes out on 9th feb uh, with its policy till then i think market will carry on with its own uh growth estimate and with earnings growth estimate which is what it should so that that's how i see it
absolutely consolidated takeaway sahil thank you so much for adding these and i think yesterday yeah. evening uh, i was discussing the same with my father where papa said that is bar tax me rate kam hoga kya and i simply replied i am just hoping that wo rate badhaye nahi because to wo na misalignment tha thoda sa wahan pe but i totally second you what you said sahil uh, i'll uh, say hi to ashish sir but uh, Sovereign green bond ke mein, in case if anyone of you want to speak or may have any insights because you know this is three or four DM I have received on the same note uh, in case if uh, Sahil or uh, Gurmeet ji you can take it up Gurmeet ji uh, did you get a chance to read about uh, this new term sovereign green bond I mean is it kind of sovereign gold bond only see i uh, whatever little i understood of you was that it's it will be used to finance the the green uh, uh, you know projects which we have which could uh, basically mean that you know projects related to uh, solar energy projects related to biofuels uh, which basically have a very positive impact on the on the on the environment i think it's just a a, a debt with a new fancy name is is uh, i'm yet to see uh, so there are no tax rebate as such uh, so we'll get more clear how the issuances happen but seems a more a case of a new name for uh, for the you know the to finance the, you know uh, projects which have you know more positive impact on the environment is what my little understanding is right or maybe ashish ashish is there and ashish can can add obviously the color of the bond is not green ंगलरिंग Uh, and you ravi of course uh, i hear great things about jar as well so anyway i just dropped in to listen to you guys but thanks for including me in uh, see i think two or three things to keep in mind as far as the budget is concerned uh, one is that uh, you know like the overarching highlight is all got to do with capex capex infra all those kinds of things but from my perspective whatever i understand i think one was relief uh, to understand that you know the focus is very much Uh, on growth right just to give you a simple contrast in 2019 we had 4% gdp growth and it was obviously now revised down to 3.7% and with that kind of anemic gdp growth because of the external macros we were overly focused on cutting our deficit and when you are struggling to grow if you try to cut deficit eventually growth will falter and with some lag deficit will again shoot up so at least theoretically the way to cut deficit is not to just cut deficit because you know you are going to sacrifice growth at least here although we are away from the whole frbm consolidation path etc etc at least what we are doing is we are prioritizing growth with some kind of thought process that if we are able to engender growth then eventually we will have some glide path to come back on the deficit itself right so that is one if we were going to have a very very hawkish thing about controlling deficit then one would have to really think clearly that is manifested you know because bond yields went up but equity market didn't really react so eventually in the long run it will impact equity also but in the short run if you go for growth and you relax a bit on deficit it's always buoyancy for equity but slightly negative for the uh, fixed income markets second thing is that everything about the budget at least what i could understand is medium term to long term if somebody asks that what's in it for the market other than what i just said it's not like tomorrow morning something changes in the market because if we have such a workman like budget where you have so many announcements about investment 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 i don't think just by listening to it one should get excited because all these things will play out over a number of years it's not like tomorrow something is going to change like for example today lnt was up 4 4% and people were excited but obviously it's not going to translate into anything uh, tomorrow or uh, day after tomorrow Uh, third thing which was interesting was that lot of new age or lot of new areas were covered right i mean taxing crypto for instance i was on some other forums where there's lot of debate whether taxing it makes it legal or not and then i also heard one of the top lawyers say that and even the cbdt chairman say that uh, i have nothing to do with legality or illegality i just feel that there is lot of transaction happening income is being generated so i'm taxing it i have nothing to do with legality so 
some of these are you know interesting facets of the uh, budget also the last part which i would say is that there is outwardly no populism you know considering that we have entered the election season at least outwardly there is no populistic overtures uh, in the budget uh, rest we have to see uh, how it pans out so that's my you know initial two bits uh, obviously i don't think i've covered it comprehensively but whatever is top of mind i just thought i'd share with you no thank you so much for addition ashish uh, sir i think uh, we are in the last leg of conversation but uh, abhishek yogesh up uh, you know thank you so much to you all for staying uh, here from the beginning itself we had almost one and a half hour conversation uh, we'll take you know just closing statement or anything you, you want to add or uh, say uh, abhishek I, i mean just from a general standpoint on something you want to say on closing note yeah hi ravi so Uh, Ravi, I concur with what Gurmeet Ji said. I think the budget is uh, will act as a GDP multiplier in times to come, and that's the need of the R. Like I was telling last year, we were talking of national asset monetization. So all that had to culminate into something, and it's good at least government is more proactive. So the thing is, a budget will always have. or uh, will work with limiting constraints so i think within that constraint i as an investor i'm happy as an individual i was anyways not expecting much well thank you so much i think that sums up really good uh, yogesh i'll come back to you gurmeet uh, you'll be the next so aapke side se kya hai uh is it for yogesh me yogesh ji or uh, अंडरलाइंग पॉजिटिव इफेक्ट ऑन एनवायरमेंट एनर्जी रिन्यूएबल्स क्लीन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन climate change just to give two recent examples i think uh, sbi had also done this dual listing of some notes very recently sbi also issued pharmosa bonds in taiwan stock exchange and even uh, i understand there is a precedent where irfc issued these bonds which were listed on the ifsc exchange so yes i think and uh, i i agree i think there is uh, we need not expect too much on the reduction of the tax front as i keep saying keep paying taxes which is the certainty including death both are these certain things in life and just to uh, respond to or rather uh, allude ashish did made a reference to legality of the crypto in my personal view not binding on anybody i would not say it is illegal or anything i would only say there it is not regulated today as we speak and tax needs to be paid even on income which is illegal thank you thank you so much yogesh sir uh, ashish sir i'll have one follow up question for you this is coming from someone in the listener panel but gurmeet ji please go ahead no i think i think i made my point and i i i agree with what ashish said i think what we have to look for uh, uh, and abhishek also seconded is that we have to look a little beyond numbers uh, those numbers will play out you know over a period of time so uh, 16000 crores for solar panels will not come tomorrow uh 48000 crores for housing projects does not mean the housing finance companies will suddenly lend 20000 crores tomorrow day one i think what what is important is directionally the government has realized and ashish made that point that the 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 main key thing to do is is growth and growth will solve uh with some you know balance and prudence lot of our problems and i and i personally think the it's a good thing to underestimate revenues uh and and be modest about expenditure we were doing the other way uh in the past we were overestimating revenues and we were underplaying expenditure using off balance sheet borrowing so i think what when you when you when you tax collections are more when your expenditures are less when when the fiscal deficit is only 50% against 75% budgeted this year it it builds credibility and these things are you know they take time to build in terms of we tried pleasing all foreign rating agencies we brought down the fiscal deficit also in the process gdp growth chart agar se niche reh gaya kuch hua nahi uh, barring a small 
you know change from triple b minus to triple b and back to triple b minus so i think this this entire business of pleasing foreign agencies getting validation from foreign uh, economists uh, i think must go uh, and i think and I, and i repeat that point that uh, an 8% growth consistently for 4 or 5 years will solve majority of the of the problems of this growing and aspirational nation what i'm most impressed is that you know the way the government went about embracing technology the way they were going about you know decarbonization as a theme the, the way they want to encourage startups they have realized it's not possible to give jobs to everyone right it's it's important to develop an entrepreneurial culture uh, which is the key for you know any economy to you know thrive and innovate so i think i am very constructive and and i made this point uh, uh, always that you know india right now i mean um, i don't want to overstate this because this is more a budget discussion i have not seen uh, nifty only correcting 5 7% when fis had sold 5 6 billion dollars i don't know if, if there is any time in the past where so much of selling has happened and and the impact has been relatively you know uh, less brutal obviously uh, uh, deeper down there will be impact so i think that i think this we are headed for good times there will be uh, sharp reactions from market on which will be event related which will be related to few days of budget here and there eventually i think this this there is continuity in the budget it sets that we are very focused towards growth and that's what you know matters to me for the medium to long run gurmeet ji thank you so much for adding so is it safe to say that it works like homeopathic medicine kaam karegi thoda time lagega yeah actually sab karta hai you know i think you know even steroids work we have seen that in us and europe right so yeah. work sab karte hain kuch short term mein kuch long term mein i think we have done some uh, some steroids also when it was needed during covid but we have been far more prudent we have not printed money we have not just thrown away money which i think is a prudent thing to do for an economy like us absolutely agree thank you so much uh, ashish sir mera question hai i think uh, around the startup so apart from investor fraternity where people were expecting something on ltc gst cg and stt uh, startups to have had expectations and i think fm mentioned something about fintech too uh would love to hear your take on that i feel you know i do believe that there was this uh, expectation and demand that you know unlisted companies and startups taxation should be in line with uh, listed equity and i think that's probably that's a fair ask right uh, uh you know so i think the bigger issue is also the fact uh, where i have heard lot of times Uh, related to this ESOP taxation, you know, where the taxation has to be only on liquidity uh, rather than on uh, exercise. So I think definitely there are issues uh, which need to be resolved, and I do believe there was expectation uh, that at least I have a couple of my classmates and friends who run VC funds. Uh, so I keep hearing from them uh, there are these unresolved uh, issues. So yeah, that is probably probably that's a bit of a letdown, no doubt about it. Bob, thank you so much. I think this conversation went for almost two hours. Uh, totally appreciate time of all of yours and Abhishek and Yogesh. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Uh, uh, you know, it was indeed an insightful session. Uh, we have to end now. We'll do this more often. You can take a screenshot, tag a speaker so that uh, we can get them again. Um, Anjali, anything you want want to say, and we can close the space. I think she'll be on mute, but but Abhishek, uh, Yogesh, Ashish sir, or uh, previous speakers, all the guests. Thank you so much for joining. Good evening, guys.